Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of your favorite TV show. Once again, we have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We support them to become more productive, get better yields, and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore what we eat, where we get it, and how we can cook it in cleaner, faster, healthier, and cheaper ways. And at the same time, increase family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice while also learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Dear viewers, we would like to let you know that all of the filming you're about to see was done before the outbreak of the coronavirus in Kenya and Tanzania. Hello and welcome to another episode Shamba of Shamba Shape Up. Who said that? Caro. Over here. Naomi. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> yes, Tony. Hi. It's so nice to see you. And great to see you, Tony. Wow. So, Caro asked me to come and stand in for her because she's having some family issues. Ah, you know, yes. I, you know I thought I was going to be alone. No one is ever alone on Chamber Shape Up, and especially your farmers. Yes, that's right. So let's go and see how we can help them. Yeah, okay. After you, Naomi. Together, Tony, together. Ah, that's right, together. <laughs> okay. As a team, let's, let's go. go. This week, we are joining forces with some old friends, Helen and Daniel in Ruiru. Farmers, we have shipped up before, but now want some help to improve even further. That's right. I can't wait to meet them again. Daniel! Hey. Yes. Hey. Hello! How are you? Hi. Fine, fine, good fine, to fine, fine. Good to know you. Nice to see you too. Wow! Yes. Yes. It's so good to be here. Thank we are you. also very thankful for Welcome. Oh, yes. thank yes. you so much. Yes. Yeah, could you show us your shamba, please? Okay. Yes. Come. Okay, thank you. All right. The last time we visited, I remember we helped Helen with planting seedlings in the greenhouse. That's right, Naomi. And Daniel wanted to learn all about breeding cows using artificial insemination from Cooper's CRV catalog. Yes. And now let's see how they've got on since our last visit and if we can help some more. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> What a yeah. beautiful shamba now. Yes, yes, indeed it is. <laughs> yeah. They've done a good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Last time we were here, do you remember we were working at the greenhouse? How has it been since that time? The greenhouse has done very good. We planted tomatoes and we have harvested twice and we are planning now to plant others. One wow. greenhouse, caps farm, and the other one, tomatoes. Awesome. Wow, great, that great. That is good, well done. Yeah. So Daniel. Yes. We were here and we took a look at your cows. Yes. How have the cows been? It has been doing very well. Mm -hmm. That calved cow yes. had given birth to a heifer, and that heifer yes. it has now gone to the second lactation. Wow, it's, like a, it's now a grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. That is good news. Yeah, it, it, it so, so what are the challenges now? We cook with three stones. So you don't have time to go and fetch firewood. We have experts with us. Mm -hmm. We'll work with you to make sure that you are shaped up. Completely. Completely shaped, shaped up. up. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. So let's pick the tent and get ready for work. So our first job today is helping out with the cows. The last time we visited Daniel, our expert inseminated one of Daniel's cows using bull semen selected from Cooper's CRV catalog. And now we've come back to find out what happened. And here's the result. Scarlet. Scarlet is a two years old heifer. So this is the result of the last insemination we yeah, did? Yeah, the last insemination we did to the mother mm -hmm. because we gave us extra semen. Yes. And we expected a black and white heifer. What was the selection from the catalog? Good feet and legs. You can see the legs are very good. Mm -hmm. Good spacing for the udder. Yes. Good confirmation. Mm -hmm. And of course, the paramount was milk production. Milk production. Yeah. Daniel has been improving his cow's genetics by using artificial insemination AI. AI lets you choose the right bulls to improve your herd. In only six generations, you can get a pedigree, high-value herd using good AI. So, 
How can we make sure we get all the benefits of using AI so that this calf goes on to produce even more milk than her mother? Our expectation when you are breeding from CRV, it will do at least 40 liters per 40 day. 40 liters per day. per day? But with that, there is a management aspect of it that will bring now to the 40 liters. To make sure Scarlett reaches her full potential of milk production, we need to first ensure she comes on heat and calves down successfully. Only then will she begin producing milk at quantity. So, how do we do that? The main basic for a heifer is now to reproduce, to make it now come to production. It will come to production, one, if it calves down. So, we have to bring it up in a way that it will come on heat, show very clear signs of heat, maintain that pregnancy, and make it to calving at ease. So what do we do with that? Yes. This is now when we introduce minerals. The mineral we are talking about is Maclic Plus. So Karaoke, why are minerals important? It will introduce it into good bone formation, that is number one. Yes. You see this is a structure. It has to be a strong and a stable structure. To be able to stand firmly, tall, yes. and be able to support its own weight. Yes. That we get it in Maclic Plus. In the same Maclic Plus, there are three elements the manganese, the zinc, all those. This one boosts the immunity of the cow in that it can be able now to resist to some of the mild diseases, the mild pneumonia. Wow. That is number two. Number three, it will make it come on heat, show clear signs of heat, make the cow be inseminated and conceive, carry that pregnancy up to term and now easy. deliver easily. So all those are the benefits of Maclic Plus. Because our target is to make this cow, a CRV cow, come to production at 24 months. So Karaoke, how does a farmer use Maclic Plus? The very, very best is to have a free choice feeding like he is doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just cut your pack. There's another pack inside for on the trough. There we go. Ah, she seems to be enjoying herself. Hey, karaoke. Yes. Why do I have fun on my palm? Ah, that's an indication of one part of management. Ah. The cow is due deworming. It is. Yeah. And when it comes to deworming, I think Naomi will help out. Right. Now I'm so busy today and I have to find some expert tree climbers for our next job on the farm. Luckily, Naomi has agreed to take over for me. Ah, there you are, Naomi. Yes. Now look, right. I've got worms. What? Uh, 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 who's got worms? The, the cattle. Oh, the cattle. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot. Uh, it's, it's a cow with the worms. <laughs> now, would you okay. kindly deal with it, uh, with Daniel here? Because yes. I have to see the expert about the avocados. Yeah, sure. Yeah? Yes. We go? All right, yeah, All right good. Okay. You're not right. scared of worms, are you? <laughs> no, of course not. All right. <laughs> Well, I see Tony hasn't changed. Still trying to tease me. But here's Karaoke. Let's see how he can help. Hey, <laughs> Karaoke, how are you? Jambo. Yes. yes. Salam okay. sana. Tony tells me the cows could have a problem. That's true. The yes. problem you're having is that the cow has worms. Possibly the ah. cow has stayed for long without being dewormed. And how can you tell that? Like mm -hmm. most of when you do this, you demonstrate that way. You can mm -hmm. see a lot of fur coming from the skin. Yeah. That is number one. Number two, you look at the eyes. It's like it's crying. It's because of the eye worms. Yeah. Okay. And if you can listen in a, a few minutes, mm. it will cough. It will cough if there are okay. worms. Then you have seen possibly that, that very loose stool because there are a lot of worms in the digestive tract. Right. And also, now that it has been invested with worms mm -hmm. and has taken a lot of blood, that is where you see the coloration is changing. Mm -hmm. The black color is now turning to be a bit brownish. Right. So we can see the fur, the change of color, mm -hmm. the cremation, the crying of from the eyes, the deep cough mm -hmm. and the loose stool. That is what has made us conclude that mm -hmm. the cow has a lot of worms. Well, poor Scarlet has all the signs of worms. So, is Daniel wasting money on feed if his cows have worms? Worms will feed on what you have brought for the cow to feed. Right. You're actually feeding the worms, not the cow. If there are lung worms, there are so many. Like this one might have about 5,000 lung worms. 5,000? Yes. 
So ideally, it's like he's feeding worms. Not the so, cow. Not the cow. Right. So the cow will look weak. The cow will not produce. Right. So that will affect production. Mm -hmm. So you ideally lose the value on the cow, and it does not give you any money. How does the cow catch its worm? Possibly you got it from dog's dung that are dunked somewhere near the where you got your forage. Mm -hmm. So you transfer the worms from the dog to the, the cow. To the the cow. cow right. Most of it, they ingest through the forage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it is something that you cannot afford. What you need to do is now to take precautions. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Yes, and so how, how do we do this? So we do worm after every three months. Okay. And we do worm with nails up, bearing the weight in mind. You must be clearly knowing the exact weight of the cow. How do you weigh the it? You weigh the cow. How? how? You, you get a wing bird. Okay. This is a wing scale for a cow. Oh, mm. you get How do you way? go about it? <laughs> <laughs> or we tie? Then okay. Hang. No, you don't yeah, hang. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> right. So just come uh -huh. after the front ribs, just after the scapula. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like that. Right. Uh -huh. And our cow, I think you can read it and shout. Two, two, 249. 249. Our 249. cow weighs 249 kilos. That's the live weight of life that is. cow. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the live weight is the one that you are going to use when deworming. Uh -huh. If you don't get the right weight. And most likely under dose is like you have not dewormed. Aha, uh -huh. mm. I see. And right. eventually the worms will create resistance. So they will not no drug will be effective on those worms. Right, right. You have to be very accurate on the weight. So now we know the weight of the cow. So, yes. so what next? Like now our cow is 250 kilos. Yes. Done. Yes. Live weight being 250 kilos. How much Nilsan plus are we supposed to use? Let me read. 125 ml. 125 ml. Yes. So the ideal dosage for this cow is 125 ml of Nilsan plus so this being a half a liter for nails and plus yes. we should have a single dose for 125 ml oh. so okay. this one dose for one cow mm -hmm. that weighs 250 kilos so we do one okay the whole of it the whole of it is a single dose okay so when deworming always start with your cow carefully locked up in a pen to avoid accidents lift the head high so the mixer goes straight through the neck and into the stomach so nothing is wasted. Repeat every three months and your cows will be free of worms and you save money on the feed and the vet bills. Good. Now that we have dewormed, yes. we are done. We wait for another three months. We come and deworm again. So we are good to go now. Okay, thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, yes. I didn't know after coming back to Shamba Shape Up, the first subject will be on worms. Worms? How was he dealing with worms? <laughs> well, the next subject will be better. After the break, we'll be talking about cooking. Uh, am I going to get some food? Definitely not. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> and I'll be dealing with avocados. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are in Riru and visiting Helen and Daniel Mumu. We have started Scarlet on the path to increasing her milk production. And we've got rid of those horrible worms. But we also want to find out about harvesting avocados. And cooking cheaply, quickly and safely with an electric pressure cooker. And so, Naomi, no time to waste. Let's go to work. Cool. Farmers are sending us many questions through Aishamba to know more about COVID-19 and how to cope even as they do their farming. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up's Q&A, question and answer. And we are lucky today to have with us in the studio Shem Mecheo, an agriculture specialist. Welcome Shem. Hi Tony. Okay, now we go straight away to the first question. Is there a way that farmers can store their fruits and vegetables during this period of COVID-19? Vegetables are perishables, meaning, you know, they go bad or they rot uh, quickly. Therefore, there are quite a number of technologies. I will uh, talk about one, the pot and pot 
technology whereby we use two pots of different sizes bigger one and the smaller one and the smaller pot is put in the bigger pot and between the spaces of the two pots we put sand and make sure that uh, the sand is well watered we can say uh, that it's moist it's well moist now as simple as that technology sounds within the smaller pot you can store your perishables and they can stay longer as compared to when they are not are there new ways when it comes to storing crops like maize during this period of coronavirus storage methods remain the same irrespective of the situation we are in what is important is to make sure that your grains are well dried and they have gotten to a level of uh, the required moisture content remember if you store uh, wet maize or moist maize then it's highly prone to uh, aflatoxins and this will not be good uh, for uh, either animal or even human consumption well thank you very much Shem, for being with us and we'll see you soon so if you have any questions around covid19 get in touch with us call or sms us your question at 0748 one five three one two zero. So, Daniel. Yes, Tony. You're saying you have uh, some challenges with your avocados. Yes. Which is one of your biggest challenges right now? The biggest challenge right now is harvesting. The the fruits are very high on the tree, so I have to cry back. You need the next part advice. Hey. Yes. Let's go meet the expert. Okay. Thank you. Now, for this shape up, we have some very special guests, climbing experts, and they are here to help Daniel prune his avocado tree. The tree has grown so high, so it's not only difficult to harvest, it also reduces the quality of the avocados by blocking out the light and the wind flow. Without wind flow, the chance of attracting diseases is higher. Bridget! Yes. How are you? I'm good. This is our farmer, Daniel. Oh, pressure to meet you, Daniel. Uh, I can see the farmer is going through a lot of challenges with the avocados. Mm -hmm. And when you look down here, yeah. what can you spot? I can spot a damaged avocado. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody went top the tree, used the normal way to harvest. Mm. It's falling down, the tree is tall. And this cannot help the farmer at all? No, no. So what else can you see? Mm -hmm. This one I know it's not ripe. Mm -hmm. This is a portion of the fruits. Mm -hmm. This is a problem again because if you look at the trees, the shade, no direct sunlight. So the fruits become weak. Yes. Because they are not getting enough sun. Yes. So these are a loss yes, to the farmer. Yes, to the farmer. And that's during harvest. Yes. Now looking at this tree, I can see his trees are quite tall. Yes, very so tall. So what would you advise the farmer to do? The only thing you can do is just pruning the trees. Pruning? What, what exactly is pruning? Like now they're tall trees, you have to bring them down. Yes. You have to do an opening for them so the sun can get direct to the bottom sides. So he should have pruned this yes, tree? Yes, from the, as early as the first year. So how, how tall should this tree be exactly? Five meters, not more than five meters. Five meters? Yes. Like now this is more than ten meters. So Bridget, would you advise farmers mm -hmm. to do pruning themselves? No, they have to get the expert to do that for them. So I'll call the Sean. There he is. <laughs> so Daniel, you can see yes. this element. Yeah. And we call it climbing element. Yes. When it's doing the cuttings, if you are using the chainsaws or the ant saws, the dust will not get inside the ice. This side, we are protecting the ears because of the sound for the chainsaw. Yeah. If you come down here, you can see the t-shirt is a bit bright. So it's like a reflector. When you are somebody stopped there, there are people around the tree. Mm. So you have to see him where he is. Yeah. So when you go down here, we have the harness to hold him when he stopped there. So we have this rope. Mm -hmm. So the rope is supposed to support you in the tree. So these ones, we call them calobinas. This one can hold the chainsaw. You can go with it on the top of the tree. Do the feet need protection? Yes, you can do a slight mistake and you can cut your leg. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have the safety boots. Mm -hmm. They have a metal somewhere here. Mm -hmm. We have this trouser, we call it protection trouser. Maybe the chain saw can swing. So this is a protection. Wow. Yes. 
He looks well protected. Yes. Now, can we see him walk? Yes. All right. John, yes. climb the tree. Tree cutting and pruning is very dangerous business. So, it's important farmers hire trained professionals with all the safety gear. Wow, Bridget. Yes. He's moving up very fast. What do you think, Daniel? That's true. The that's speed that's is quick. Yeah. They will also make sure not to damage the tree so we get a bumper harvest. So you have to start there, small branches. Then from there you cut limbs. And you make sure they do not destroy any crop. Yes. You are not supposed to destroy anything. Anything, anything, anything. at yes. all, at all. Yes. Okay, how should the cut be? It's supposed to be 45 degrees, mm. the cut sliding because of the rain. Because when it's raining, the drops will not stand here. If the water is stand here, mm. it will start rotting. If okay. it is cut flat? Yes. Like now if you use panka, mm -hmm. it will be like this. Now I can understand why we need an expert for this. Yes. You have to be very precise on the yes. cut. Yes. You could get your trees pruned for as little as 100 shillings per tree. Get in touch with Aishamba for more information. Now, main advantage of pruning. Next season we'll be having a lot of fruits. Also the fruits will be big. The bottom will be having fruits. So yeah. the whole tree yes. will have fruits. Yes. Uh, just because of the enough sunlight. Yes. So now, after doing this, our farmer will get his quality yes. and quantity. Yes. So, our final job today is to introduce Helen to a new way of cooking. We have invited Warimo Muturi, also known as Nimo's Kitchen, on social media. She's going to show Helen how to save time, how to save money, and how to protect her health as well. Today I'm going to introduce to you the electric pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. It's a faster way of preparing your meals. It's also safe mm -hmm. and it also saves you money for getting the firewood and sending people. Mm -hmm. With this pressure cooker, mm -hmm. you can prepare every single thing that you usually do. So what do you mostly prepare at home? I I prepare githeri, we call it githeri. Githeri? Yes. Mm -hmm. And how long does it take to prepare githeri in using the firewood? It can take four hours. Four hours? Yeah. And you are patient the four hours? What am I going to do because I don't have a pressure cooker? <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. with this, um, with the pressure cooker, mm -hmm. for githeri, mm -hmm. it usually takes around 40 minutes. Aye, 40 minutes? Just 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. If the maize and the beans you are using mm -hmm. are already soaked mm -hmm. or they are soft. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. wow. And another thing, mm. it does not smoke. Uh -huh. So health wise it's very safe. It's very yeah, safe. Because smoke is really yes. affects children and you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this will be perfect for yeah. you Helen. Yeah. It is true. That's good. Could you mm -hmm. take us through, you know, different parts of the pressure cooker so we can understand how it works? I'll start with the outer bit. Here we have a control panel. It has all the menu settings for everything that this pressure cooker can prepare. Mm -hmm. You're not limited to only the things listed here. Mm -hmm. You can also incorporate what you usually cook on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. The lid has a pressure valve mm -hmm. and a pin. When there is pressure inside the pressure cooker, this pin is lifted mm -hmm. and that will indicate there is enough pressure within the pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. This seal, pressure valve, it seals and unlocks mm -hmm. the pressure from the pressure cooker. That's really exciting, isn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah? yeah? So, I'm really anxious. Let's start cooking. Yes. So today, Nemo is going to be showing us how to cook Kenyaji chicken with onion, tomato, garlic, herbs and spices. We are going to start with um, switching on the pressure cooker. That. You can hear, there is a beep. The first step, is usually to saute yeah. kukaranga. Mm -hmm. To saute, I'm going to press menu number five mm -hmm. for the saute. Mm -hmm. We are going to start with browning the mm -hmm. chicken. Mm -hmm. right. With the browning, it helps in um, creating a good base for your soup. Mm -hmm. These ones are ready now. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to remove them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put them on this sufuria. Mm -hmm. Yes. We are going to saute the onions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, to just make them a little bit brown, golden brown. Right. I'm going to add my garlic now. I'm going to throw yeah, mm -hmm. stump of ginger. Add in my tomatoes. Mm -hmm. We're going to add the dania. Add the chicken. 
add in one full cup of water to slightly cover your food, a little bit of salt mm -hmm. to taste, mm -hmm. and ensure there is a good mix. And close it with the um, pressure cooker lid. And then now, a well done kuku kenyeji takes 40 minutes. Right. Once pressure has built in completely, this pin, right. it will come up. Mm -hmm. And until the timer has ended, that's when it will go down. Mm -hmm. yes. So it is cooking through pressure. It's now cooking with the pressure. Mm -hmm. And for you to verify that the pressure is already built up, mm -hmm. you can see there is nothing here. Even even a tiny smoke, mm -hmm. you can't mm -hmm. see, you can't hear anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now everything is working inside. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now you can go carry out any other business within mm -hmm. your household mm -hmm. and your food will be cooking. So that's it. Just 40 minutes later and it's all done. And it looks wonderful. I can't wait to try it. Mmm, delicious. Mmm, really, really nice. Like nice. Mm. Good. It's really good, yeah? Very nice. Very, mm. very tasty. Well, that's another great success. This must be one of the best chicken kenyeji I've ever tested. Aha. Wow, what a shape up Naomi. Yes, indeed, it was great. So, Daniel, did you yeah. enjoy your company? You know, from the point you left me up to this time, you have improved my income. Ah. Yeah, improved, yeah. especially on daily. Yes, everything has list. Even the standard of our living. Thank you very much, Shampa Shippa. Ah. <laughs> yeah. And so, we'll see you in the next Shampa Shippa. <laughs>